Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShop.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is one of our new kits. It's an LM317 based uh, DC to DC pow uh, variable power supply board. It comes with the massive heatsink, the LM317, and all the capacitors uh, and other passive components required to power it. Uh, there is a bridge rectifier at the input, so you can place either DC or AC at the input. If you place DC, you will be losing a few volts along the diodes. However, if you really want to, you can uh, modify this so that you don't have the diodes and you don't have the input voltage drop. I can show you how to do that. This is essentially an assembly video, so if you're not interested in the assembly portion of this video, you can still skip to the end for a demonstration. Here are the components. Six diodes, two two-pin terminal blocks, 5K potentiometer, two 0 0.1 microfarad capacitors, a 500 ohm resistor, LM317, a heatsink screw, a heatsink, your variable resistor potentiometer knob, uh, an optional nut to go on the variable resistor, a 10 microfarad uh, capacitor, a 470 microfarad capacitor, and a 2200 uh, microfarad capacitor. So I'm going to show you now how to throw this thing together. It should only take you about 15 minutes. So just follow along with the video. So for reference, you have your two terminal blocks, uh, input and output. We've got, a I have to correct myself, we have five diodes, not six. One is placed here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Uh, they are labeled uh, 1N4007, they're power diodes. Four of them will be used for a bridge rectifier, and one will be used as a protective diode. So first of all, we can place our four diodes at our bridge rectifier between, between uh, on either side of the input capacitor. However, um, on the board, there's no markings as to which way the diode should go. So if you actually look at the diodes, there's a white side and then there's a black side. Pay attention after I solder them in, which way uh, which way I'm placing them, because if you place them backwards, you're going to get short circuits, it's not going to be any good, so I'll, uh, I'm going to stop the video, solder those five diodes in, and then uh, I'll talk about it. As you might be able to see, on these top two diodes here, the white faces the right side of the board for both of them, so the white is on the right side of the board for this one and this one. And for the lower two here, both white sides of the diodes are facing the left side of the board. Uh, hopefully you can see that. And for our protective diode, the white end of the diode is facing the right side of the board. So now we're going to solder in our terminal blocks. Really easy step. Very easy step. There's two terminal blocks. Make sure that the... The... Uh, Output mounts are facing outward for both of them because if you solder them backwards, you're going to have a lot of trouble uh, <laughs> placing your input and output wires. So that's very easy, no polarity, no nothing. It's very simple. Next, we will do uh, our heat sink and then we'll do the LM317 just to get that big bulky part of the way. Then it's almost smooth sailing. So I place the heat sink in, the rib side is facing the back. The, the flat side is facing the front. Next, we're going to place in our LM317. Now, don't solder it. What you want to do is bend the middle pin forward a little bit, place the LM317 into the PCB uh, through the three holes in the front, and before you solder it, you want to screw the back of the LM317 into the heatsink very tightly. After that, then we can solder it. So what I'll do is I will do this. I won't solder it, but I'll place the LM317 in, and I'll show you. So as you can see, the middle pin is bent forward a little bit. Now, I haven't soldered this yet, but you want to make sure that that screw is in very tight. It requires a little Phillips screwdriver. So we'll solder that. Next, we will do our capacitors. First of all, we're going to start off with our little... 104 capacitors. These are uh, 0 0.1 microfarad uh, decoupling capacitors. And one goes in here, and one goes in the far back to the left of the LM317. So to the right and the left of the LM317. These, the area, the, the footprints are labeled 
C3 and C2, and they both have a 104 on them. There's no there's no polarity, so you can solder them in either way. Uh, very easy to do. Next, we'll talk about the electrolytic capacitors. Now, they do have a polarity, so you have to make sure that you place them in the correct way. Each footprint for each electrolytic capacitor has a plus sign on it. The plus sign is an indicator of the positive side of the electrolytic capacitor, which is actually indicated by the longer lead. So in the case of the 10 microfarad capacitor, we want to place our longer lead at the top here. There is a little plus sign at the top of that footprint. And we want to place the, neg the negative, which is the shorter lead of the electrolytic capacitor, on the bottom pin. Now for our input capacitor, it's labeled on the board 2200 microfarads. It's actually a 470 microfarad capacitor. And you want to you place that, the long lead there, uh, where, the posit where there's the positive indicator and the shorter lead on the top towards the terminal block. And in the case of the output capacitor, this is labeled 2000. 200 microfarads and in fact this is the we do have it the kit does come with a 2200 microfarad capacitor the plus symbol is too close to the terminal block you might not be able to see in the video but it's right here place the longer lead there and the shorter lead uh, to the left side of the PCB very simple step you've got your 200 ohm resistor place it in the R2 slot it's labeled R2 and then in the actual footprint says 200, so 200. That's the 200 ohm resistor and place it in there. There's no polarization. La after that, we're going to do our, uh, we're going to place our last component and then we're going to test it. Place your 5K potentiometer in the three holes facing the front here. And once you're done, what I want you to do is turn the variable resistor all the way left. So solder it into place and turn it all the way left. Now that you've soldered it in, place it all the way left. What you want to do is you want to take the uh, the knob and have the uh, indicator face lower left, not directly down, but lower left. Just push it in. It should sit in. And now you get far right, full power less power, rather low voltage, high voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put DC on the input right now and we'll give it a quick test. I've got about 18 volts DC, 18.28 volts DC on the input. Now because we've got our diodes in there, bridge rectifier, it doesn't matter if you put your positive uh, on the right or left of the terminal block or the ground or the right on, the on the right or the left, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you want to bypass the, the diodes, it will matter. In this case, I've got my positive DC voltage on the right side of the terminal block and my DC ground on the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probe the output. And that's our minimum, 1.26 volts, 1.25 volts. We'll just turn the knob. And there we go we can vary the output voltage. Now as you can see, I've got about a two volt drop because of our input diodes. So what what I can do is I'll, I will now show you where you can solder to if you want to solder uh, for direct DC. From the back, our bridge rectifier diodes are here, 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 and here. Now if you want to, if you want to, what you can do is you can, you can solder your direct DC uh, here. This is DC ground, this side of the diodes nearing the terminal block, and this will be your positive input voltage on this side of the diodes. So if you don't want to place your diodes, you don't want a voltage drop along the diodes, what you can do is you can actually solder a jumper. In the case of negative, you'd use uh, this terminal side of the terminal block for your negative, your DC ground, and you would just sh short it here to the second side of the diodes. You wouldn't place the diodes at all and you'd use another jumper for your positive DC voltage and you solder here and you jump it to the secondary side of the uh, of the diodes here. And that will give you uh, next to no voltage drop. So I'm hoping you're able to see that. If you that wasn't clear enough or you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks for watching guys.